text 41 by the conquest of the current samna he is surrounded by a blaze of light whenever he likes light flashes from his body text 42 by making samyama on the relation between the ear and the akasha comes divine hearing there is the akasha the ether and the instrument the ear by making samyama on them the yogi gets super normal hearing he hears everything anything spoken or sounded miles away he can hear text 43 by making samyama on the relation between the akasha and the body and becoming light as cotton wool etc through meditation on them the yogi goes through the skies This akasha is the material of this body. It is only akasha in a certain form that has become the body. If the yogi makes a samyama on this akasha material of his body, it acquires the lightness of akasha and he can go anywhere through the air. So in the other case also. Text 44. By making samyama on the real modifications of the mind outside of the body called great disembodiedness. comes disappearance of the covering to light the mind in its foolishness thinks that it is working in this body why should i be bound by one system of nerves and put the ego only in one body if the mind is only present there is no reason why i should the yogi wants to feel the ego wherever he likes the mental waves which arise in the absence of egoism in the body are called real modifications or great disembodiedness when he has succeeded in making samyama on these modifications all covering to light goes away and all darkness and ignorance vanish everything appears to him to be full of knowledge text 45 by making samyama on the pros and fine forms of the elements their essential traits the inherence of the gunas in them and on their contributing to the experience of the soul comes mastery of the elements the yogi makes samyama on the elements first on the pros and then on the finer states this samyama is taken up more by a sect of buddhists they take a lump of clay and make samyama on that and gradually they begin to see the fine materials of which it is composed and when they have known all the fine materials in it they get power over that element so with all the elements the yogi can conquer them all text 46 from that comes minuteness and the rest of the powers glorification of the body and indestructibleness of the bodily qualities this means that the yogi has attained the eight powers he can make himself as minute as a particle or as huge as a mountain as heavy as the earth or as light as the air he can reach anything he likes he can rule everything he wants he can conquer everything he wants and so on a lion will sit at his feet like a lamb and all his desires will be fulfilled at will text 47 the glorification of the body is beauty complexion strength adamantine hardness the body becomes indestructible nothing can injure it nothing can destroy it until the yogi wishes breaking the rod of time he lives in this universe with his body In the Vedas it is written that for that man there is no more disease death or pain. Text 48 By making samyama on the objectivity and power of illumination of the organs on egoism the inherence of the gunas in them and on their contributing to the experience of the soul comes the conquest of the organs. In the perception of the external objects the organs leave their place in the mind and go towards the object this is followed by knowledge egoism also is present in the act when the yogi makes samyama on these and the other two by gradation he conquers the organs take up anything that you see or feel a book for instance first concentrate the mind on it then on the knowledge that is in the form of a book and then on the ego that sees the book and so on by that practice all the organs will be conquered 
text 49 from that comes to the body the power of rapid movement like the mind power of the organs independently of the body and conquest of nature just as by the conquest of the elements comes glorified body so from the conquest of the organs will come the above mentioned powers text 50 by making samyama on the discrimination between the sattva and the purusha come omnipotence and omniscience when nature has been conquered and the difference between the purush and the nature realized that the purush is indestructible pure and perfect then comes omnipotence and omniscience text 51 by giving up even these powers comes the destruction of the very seed of evil which leads to kaivalya he attains aloneness independence and becomes free when one gives up the ideas of omnipotence and omniscience there comes entire rejection of enjoyment of the temptations from celestial beings. When the yogi has seen all these wonderful powers and rejected them, he reaches the goal. What are all these powers? Simply manifestations. They are no better than dreams. Even omnipotence is a dream. It depends on the mind. So long as there is a mind, it can be understood. But the goal is beyond even the mind. Text 52. The yogi should not feel allured or flattered by the overtures of celestial beings for fear of evil again. There are other dangers too. Gods and other beings come to tempt the yogi. They do not want anyone to be perfectly free. They are jealous just as we are and worse than us sometimes. They are very much afraid of losing their places. Those yogis who do not reach perfection die and become gods. Leaving the direct road, they go into one of the side streets and get these powers. Then again, they have to be born. But he who is strong enough to withstand these temptations and go straight to the goal becomes free. Text 53. By making samyama on a particle of time and its precision and succession comes discrimination. How are we to avoid all these things, these devas and heavens and powers? by discrimination, by knowing good from evil. Therefore, samyama is given by which the power of discrimination can be strengthened. This is by making a samyama on a particle of time and the time preceding and following it. Text 54 Those things which cannot be differentiated by species, signs and place, even they will be discriminated by the above samyama. The misery that we suffer comes from ignorance, from non-discrimination between the real and the unreal. We all take the bad for the good, the dream for the reality. Soul is the only reality and we have forgotten it. Body is an unreal dream and we think we are all bodies. This non-discrimination is the cause of misery. It is caused by ignorance. When discrimination comes, it brings strength. And then alone can we avoid all these various ideas of body, heavens and gods. This ignorance arises through differentiating by species, signs and place. For instance, take a cow. The cow is differentiated from the dog by species. Even with the cows alone, how do we make the distinction between one cow and another by signs? If two objects are exactly similar, they can be distinguished if they are in different places. When objects are so mixed up that even these differentiate will not help us, the power of discrimination acquired by the above mentioned practice will give us the ability to distinguish them. The highest philosophy of the yogi is based upon this fact that the purusha is pure and perfect and is the only simple that exists in this universe. The body and the mind are compounds and yet we are ever identifying ourselves with them. This is the great mistake that the distinction has been lost. When this power of discrimination has been attained, man sees that everything in this world, mental and physical, is a compound and as such cannot be the Purusha. Text 55 The saving knowledge is that knowledge of discrimination which simultaneously covers all objects in all their variations. Saving because the knowledge takes the yogi across the ocean of birth and death. The whole of Prakriti in all its states, subtle and gross, is within the grasp of this knowledge. 
There is no succession in perception by this knowledge. It takes in all things simultaneously at a glance. Text 56. By the similarity of purity between the Sattva and the Purusha comes Kaivalya. When the soul realizes that it depends on nothing in the universe, from gods to the lowest atom, that is called Kaivalya, isolation and perfection. It is attained when this mixture of purity and impurity called Sattva, intellect, has been made as pure as the Purusha itself. Then the Sattva reflects only the unqualified essence of purity, which is the Purusha.